All right, can y'all see the screen? You bro. You bro. All right. Um, All right. Um, <laughs> this, this is amazing because I'm going to essentially continue from where Chief Joff had y'all and go through the bloodlines of Europe and show you how they was melanated. But before I do that, we're going to show the science of DNA. If DNA is software, who wrote the code? That's the question. The profound significance of life's programming language by Tom Bunsell. This is him on the back of the cover. All right. DNA as software is not merely a metaphor. It's a fact. Geneticists have discovered that the same methods of processing information, program, and subroutines instruct our bodies as DNA and in our brains as neural networks. They now edit DNA as a software program by sequencing or decoding its meaning and intent. But if DNA is software, who wrote the code? For a society addicted to computers, there's a very profound, this is a very profound question. From our experience with computers, we know that our software requires an intent, is intentionally, or intentional, excuse me, intelligence to create. If you deeply understand what it means for life to operate, with the precision and perfection of the software we have created in this image, it can open up, open you up to a completely different view of nature and yourself. Now, this, this, this is fact. Now, think about what, what I just read. Who do you think wrote the program? That's the question before I give you the answer. Because actually it's in your DNA. In fact, it is your DNA. <laughs> now it's probably going to test us. Say it again? Now it's probably going to our bloodline to our ancestors. Um, hold on, let me turn it up some because it sounds kind of low. There you go, oh. Chief Joe. Say it again. Oh, I said that was passed down through our bloodline by our ancestors. Exactly. So passed down through the bloodline. So who placed that code there? Is it just by chance? Do you know how much complex this DNA code is? The DNA code contains all the information that makes up an organism, all the features that makes you, every quality and trait that you possess, every chemical reaction taking place inside your body, and a lot more. This code is transferred to the next generations. This is the reason why a child has many characteristics similar to his or her parents. It's interesting to note that a child shares 99.5% of the DNA with his parents. Everything that is happening inside the cell is instructed by the DNA code written in the language of four letters, A, T, G, C. Once again, I just told you the science right there. It was instructed by the DNA code written in the language of four letters, A, T, G, C, which we call amino acids, the building blocks of life protein. Not only this, this code has instructed also for auto repairing itself. This three billion letter code is copied to new cells before a cell dies. So the information is not lost after the death of the cell. This all these all unbelievable complex functions are programmed by the DNA code at extremely high speeds without you even noticing. 
So it's obvious that the job to write this program is beyond the limits of a human mind. Well, only thing that is beyond the limits of the human mind would be, i.e., the soul. And the soul is the spark of God. No program has ever been written by chance. If you are a computer programmer, then you can understand how much intelligence, concentration, creativity, pain, and take, and time, excuse me, pain and time, pain and time it takes to write a simple code of just a few hundred words. And I've done coding before, and I can tell you computer coding yeah, it's tedious. If you want to get a task done by instructing a machine, can the computer program be written without an intelligent program by itself, by chance? The answer is no. So how can we understand this incredible long code of 3 billion letters that is unbelievably complex and the densest storage of information in the universe can be written without any Super intelligence behind it? Who is the program? What are these letters? Anyone knows? Yahe Vahe. Yahe Vahe, exactly. Which would be translated in English, Jehovah, which is a misnomer. The proper word would be Yahweh or Yahuwah. What they did was take Yahweh, which is called the Tetragrammaton, which also possesses four letters, just like you just read about a code. Just read about the code of four letters. It says DNA code written in the language of four letters, A T G C. Well, your DNA don't say A T G C. It says Yahavahe, which equals DNA. So the code programmer is the God in which they are supposed to be calling upon, which is, which is Yahweh or Yahuwah. The Book of Knowledge, the Keys of Enoch, a teaching given on seven levels to be read and visualized in preparation for the Brotherhood of Light, to be delivered for the quickening of the people of light. Well, this correlates to Prophet Noble Drali within the Holy Quran Circle 7, where he speaks of that we are the revealers of light. This is written by J.J. Hertek, and this is what it says. The name of Yahweh, or Yahweh, is coded within every biochemical function in our body, especially within the life-giving DNA, RNA matrix. Mm. So we are made of Yahweh, or the four basic amino acids, A, T, G, C, which is adenine, tyrosine, guanine, and adenine. DNA. Your DNA is more than just a string of chemicals. It is a complex vibrating energy matrix which creates a kind of music that can be heard in the spiritual realm. This music form a morphogenetic field. This is what formed in order to bring your physical body into existence. Between your mother and your father, they brought down a soul within a vortex in which that formed a morphogenetic field in which that was a template for your human body. Everybody understand what I'm saying? 
Yibo. All right. So here we have Yahweh or Yahweh or Yahuwah, Miss Nomer, Jehovah. The DNA RNA can then work with higher light irradiation factors which allow for new changes to take place enabling the body to be ultimately a body of light. This is the transference from 666, which is carbon, six protons, six, two, six neutrons, and six electrons, to 616, six electrons, one neutron, neuron, neutron, excuse me, and six protons. That is the crystallization of your body. That is the transformation of what is called the light body, the rainbow body, the celestial body. This is the highest of heights. Hence, the recoding DNA, RNA will give forth a new physical form for the body of light, and man will see how the body of the physical flesh, the physical DNA, RNA, is simply the biochemical preparation necessary for the infusion of the Christ body of light. Mm, 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 mm. Hope you're getting this. This is the purpose of DNA. Mm, yeah. So right here, scientists found proof of God in DNA code, evidence of God, the God code, God DNA. So scientists have found proof of the God in the code of DNA. But when did they found, found but when did they found in the DNA code that made them believe in the in the um existence of God? Evidence of God has been found by scientists in the complexity of DNA. The God code or God genome or Yahuwah genome. As you know, there's a computer program is is a series of binary numbers, i.e. ones and zeros. And this sequence of ones and zeros instruct the computer what to do. All right? Well, it's the same thing with the letters that I told you about. Adonine, dynine, guanine, and cytosine. All right, which is ATGC, the four basic amino acids. Thus, your physical body is Yahweh, Yahuwah. For the woman, Yahweh. This is why Eve name is Hawa in the Old Testament, because she's the mother of all living things. Yahweh is the woman. Yahuwah is the man. Both have the tetragrammaton or the four letters in which that is the formation of what we call DNA RNA matrix, which is your physical body. Thus, Yahweh breaks down Yah equals 10, which is fire, Ra or Re. All right, that's what five years is, Ra. And then Yahe equals 15. He equals five, which is water. Newt. Yahe, Va. Or Va equals 21. Va equals six. Some say Va. Or Wa. All right, Wa is actually the way we say it. Va is the way that the European who speak Yiddish say it. But as you see, fire, water, now we add air, which is tefnut. Yahe vahe or yahe wahe equals 26. He equals five, which symbolizes earth, which is ged. So the four elements is ra, nut, 
Tefnut Ged. Yahweh is Yahuwah, man, which equals mind, or and Yahweh, which is the womb, man, which equals universal mind. Thus, together we form Allah, which is arm, leg, leg, arm, head, which is Allah. Man is Allahi with the eye and the period at the end which symbolizes the phallus and the semen. That is the phallus, which is the eye. The period is itself the dot of life, which is the period, uh, which is um, the semen or sperm. The woman is Allahu. The U symbolizes the uterus or the womb. Together, Allahi and Allahu makes up what is called the Allahumma. The Allahumma is called the Elohim. So we are the Elohim. We are the Anunnaki, which symbolizes Aleph or Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Life begins with man and woman. It also ends with man and woman, which do weird practices such as homosexuality. Thus, no children are produced, or when you have a government in which that enforces no children, or having the people to be barren, such as China, in other places, but together, the Alpha and Omega is Aum. Aum is Alim, which means universe and all, all knowing. This is why Adam spoke of when he got with Eve. He said, "I knew Eve, and she conceived." This is in your Bible. Adam knew Eve. And she conceives. How did he know her? It was through the sexual experience. Tantra Kriya Yoga. Here we have Yahuwah, once again, in the shape of a man. Because as we read earlier, what did we read? We read the fact is, is that the name of Yahweh is coded within every biochemical function in our bodies, especially within the life-giving DNA RNA matrix. All right. So we broke down already how Yahweh or Yahweh is C-A-T-G, which are the nucleus, nucleic acids that determines the complexity or complex process of heredity. The sequence of the four bases or nucleotides, each nucleotide consists of the sugar deoxyribose, and ribose is the underlying word rib, as you see there, this is the rib. CATG gives the genetic message code for all forms of life evolved. It forms the rings of the DNA spiraling ladder. DNA is another form of, when you go to the Old Testament, Genesis 28, 12, behold, a ladder sat up on the earth, and the top of it reached heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascended and descended on it. Jacob's ladder, DNA ecliptic pattern, is nearly identical to the Kundalini Shakti's elliptical pattern. Therefore, Jacob's ladder also represents the Kundalini Shakti energy, which is also called the mother life force energy or the mother principle of the life force energy within each and every one of us. So, human DNA. I won't go along on this. But the Hebrew-speaking king of the Jews was given a Hebrew name. He wasn't named Jesus, but Yahshua, 
in the Gospels, the Messiah say that he came in his father's name, the name of Yahweh, or what we call Yahuwah or Yahweh. How is Yahweh Yahshua's name? Well, the name Yahshua is a compound word made up of two Hebrew phrases. First, Yad, which is a shortened version of the name of Yahweh. The name Yad is a poetic form of Yahweh found throughout the Psalms. The King James Version say, and keep King James in mind because I'm going to go through history with him. Sign, sing praises to his name. Exalt him to deliver turn, save, or salvation. When those, when these two words are put together, the Savior's true name is revealed. Yah, Shua. Yah, or Yahweh, is salvation, equals Yahshua. Yahweh, or Yahweh, or Yahweh, offers his salvation. So this is the reason why we don't use the name Jesus. We use the name Yahshua. Now, you get the book, The Occult Significance of Blood by Rudolf Steiner. Now, this is very important. Blood is therefore an expression of the individualized etheric body. Remember, the etheric body is part of that template or morphogenetic field that we talked about. Just as the brain and spinal cord are the expression of the individualized astral body. And it is this individualizing which brings about, which lives as the ego or I. Having followed man thus far in his evolution, we find that we have to do with a chain consisting of five links affecting the physical body, the etheric body, and the astral body, and these links are the inorganic, neutral, physical forces, the vital fluids, which are also found in plants, the lower or sympathetic nervous system, the higher astral body, which has been evolved from the lower one, and which finds its expression in the spinal cord and the brain. The principle that individualizes the etheric body. The blood absorbs those pictures that is being recorded through the eyes, via the brain, through all 76 trillion of your cells, the blood absorbs these pictures of the outside world when the brain has formed within, hmm. transforms them into living constructive forces, and with them builds up the present physical body. So you want to know how that morphogenetic field helps to build up the construction of the body is through those four basic amino acids as it transforms them into living constructive forces. And with them builds up the present human body. Blood is therefore the material that builds up the physical human body. What is it? The blood is therefore the material that builds up the physical body. We have before us a process in which that the blood extracts from the cosmic environment the highest substance it can possibly attain via oxygen, which is prana, which renews the blood and supplies it with fresh life. In this manner, our blood is caused to open itself to the out of world. The forces of the blood are direct inward. They build up the inner man. And again, they are turned outward to the oxygen of the external world. This is why on going to sleep, man sinks into unconsciousness. He sinks into that which his consciousness can experience in the blood. When, however, he again opens his eye, his eyes to the outer world, his blood adds to his constructive forces, the pictures produced by the brain and the senses. <clears throat> Thus the blood stands midway, as it were, between the inner world of pictures 
and the exterior living world of form. This role becomes clear to us when we study two phenomena, which is what? Ancestry. That's number one. The relationship between conscious beings and experiencing the world of eternal events, ancestry, or descent. Places where we stand in accordance with the law of blood relations. Keep this in mind. Because you're getting ready to drop it. This is just a preview. A person is born on a connection, a race, a tribe, a line of ancestors for which these ancestors have bequeathed to him in his, in his blood. What? What these ancestors have bequeathed to him is in his blood. In the blood is gathered together, as it were, all the material past has constructed a man, and in the blood is also being formed all that is being prepared for the future. Mm. What y'all think about that? Give me a comment or two. Comment or two. That's deep. <laughs> really, that means that, that means that in your body, your, your blood, body, your blood, you prepare in your death and yeah. your death. Exactly. Exactly. The the ancestors are always, with us. always with us. Exactly. You know I'm you know I'm big on astrology too, so it brought me back to the Aquarius too of being, you know what I'm saying, representing the um, the horseman with the scales and shit. And right. building the body, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So get the book. <laughs> we are not just yeah. Africans. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. We are not just African, Black Native American by Clyde Winters. This is what he says. This is what he says. We are not just African is the title of my book because, please, somebody mute their background. We are not just Africans is the title of my book because Afro-Americans are more than descendants of Sub-Saharan Africans. We have been lied to about black history. Our ancestors include black Europeans. What did he just say? He did say that. He did say that. Black Europeans. Black Europeans. Mm. And as black Native them. Americans. Yep. Right, as he calls them. Right, exactly. And black Native Americans. Mm, that's interesting. So have you ever heard that you was connected to these black Europeans? Well, you heard some of it because Chief Joff read to you some of the information from book number seven by Lee Cummins. But I'm going to go deeper than the book. When I was growing up, my mother made it clear that we was part Choctaw. So in 1968-69, I took a survey in my high school, the Sable, in Chicago and found out that over 40% of my classmates had Indian heritage. Europe was a black continent. Oh, wait, what, 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 what? Are you serious? I thought it was nothing more than Europeans there or who we referred to as white people, the pale man. Well, that came much later. Europe was a black continent. Not only was America a black continent, and I'm talking about North, Central, and South America and the adjoining islands, but so, of course, we know Africa is a black continent. India was a black continent, and so was Australia a black continent. Asia also was a black continent, which Europe is. Europe is nothing more than Asia. In fact, Europe is Asia Minor. There is no Europe because there is no continent that begins and ends with an A, except for continents. Europe begins with an E and ends with an E. Therefore, it's not a continent. <laughs> Simple as that. However, being that it's part of Asia, Asia is. Asia begins with an A, ends with an A. Africa begins with an A, ends with an A. Australia ends with an, begins with an A, ends with an A. 
America begins with an A, ends with an A. Antarctica begins with an A, ends with an A. You get the connection? So astrological and historical evidence all indicates that ancient Europe was black, and these blacks taught the white civilization. And this is what Clyde Winters, Dr. Clyde Winters, PhD, also speaks of, who authored more than 14 books. So let's go into that. According to AAAS, moderate humans who migrated out of Africa and settled in Europe around 40,000 years ago likely had dark skin. So it was more than 40,000 years ago, we had dark-skinned Europeans, which is advantageous in sunny climates. In fact, data suggests that early hunter-gatherers in Spain, Luxembourg, and Hungary around 8,500 years ago was also had dark skin. These hunter-gatherers lack versions of the gene, in other words, they lack the receptivity of the genes SLC24A5 and SLC45A2, which cause depigmentation in the skin and in the eyes and pale skin to moderate human Europeans. Other evidence suggests that humans may have migrated into Europe from Africa even earlier than 40,000 years ago, of course. A 2020 study found DNA from ancient African humans in the Neanderthal nucleus, nuclear genome, which suggests that an early group of Africans may have interbreeded with Neanderthals in Europe or Asia around 250,000 years ago. Hmm. Well, sorry for them. <laughs> a skull found in 2008 that was 36,000 years old has similarities to early Europeans, but not, but not, but not Neanderthals or moderate populations, suggesting that we were all Africans before the world human population differentiated into different races and ethnicities. Possibility. That's if you want to go with that scenario. But anyway. Here, in the year 1664, there were 7,000 Dutchmen, besides the real Dutchmen, Prussians, Bohemians, French, Swedes, Norwegian, Danes, and 5,000 English, including Scots, Welsh, and Irish. Hmm. All right, Benjamin Franklin describes them. Now, this is coming from the same book in which that Chief Joff was reading to you. Why should the Palatine Moors be suffered to swarm into our settlement? They would never adopt our customs and any more than they could attain our complexion. All of Africa, Asia, and America are swarthy black. Russian. Italian, or Italy, excuse me, Spain, France, Sweden, and the Germans are black. Hmm. Wow. This is what Benjamin Franklin said. All of Africa, Asia, and America. So they knew they was the least dominant on the planet. They knew that we outnumbered them more than 18 to 1. Or swarthy. The word swarthy means black. Russians, Italy, of course Italy, Spain, yes, France, Sweden, and the Germans are black. The principal whites are made up of the Saxons and the English. The Scots, the Welsh, and Irish are not Saxon or English. When Benjamin Franklin writes these essays in 1751, the black German king, George II, is sitting on the throne of England. Mm. These are the African-featured nobilities of early Europe, part one. You can go to race and history. 
go to www.raceandhistory. And you can look up this information yourself. Research. Message. So here we have the two image. We have the image of Le Leopold the First, who was Leopold Has Hasberg. He was a Holy Roman Emperor, King of Hungary, and King of Bohemia. Now, if you remember, this is the same thing from which that we just read. All of Africa, Asia, and America are swarthy blacks. Russia, Italy, Spain, France, Sweden, and Germany, Germans are blacks. Well, this goes right above the head. It said there were 7,000 Dutchmen besides the real Dutch. The Persians, oppressions, excuse me, Bohemians, there it is, French, Sweden, Norwegians, Danes, and 5,000 English, who Benjamin Franklin, um, which basically don't include them either. So, you have William the First, Prince of Orange. You have Maurice. You have also um, an image of George Ferris, which is a great musical composer. And you also have Charlemagne, as we say, Charlemagne the God. No, Charlemagne, in which that also had African royalty and was of the Holy Roman Empire. Now, when you speak, when we speak of the Holy Roman Empire, we speak of the Hasburgs. All right, the Hasburg, H A S. All right, so say P or B. All right, B U. Um, um, H A B or P S B U R G. So now we have an individual who is posing as a royal. <laughs> Question, Doc. Yes. So this has been, and this is France uh, bloodline. This is who? Yeah. Say it again, guys. That's from France, right? France for our bloodline. Oh, the um, Hasburg, you can, shoot, we talk about not just France, Spain. Um, we're talking about um, Austria. We're talking about um, Hungary, or Hungary, however you want to be, um, pronounce it. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about like um, parts of Eastern and Western Europe. But... I'll carry on. So here we have an individual. His name is Red Eagle <laughs> Khufu L. All right, this is brought to my attention once again by Chief Joff um, this past week because he had to make a comment concerning if I'm fraudulent or not. So this is what this class is going to be based on. So here, this is what it says. You go to the website, which you see at the top of the page. I'm not going to, if you want to see it, you can capture the screen, go to it. If not, don't worry about it. Were you sovereign emperor? Emperor what? Oh, the Nama. We call it the Nama Nation, whatever that is. Heary, 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 heary. Oh, Lord. The royal sovereign emperor calls out the coup d'etat, de facto, want to be fraudulent prince. And how is that possible? <laughs> coup d'etat, de facto, want to be fraudulent prince, doing business as Osaru Alim El Bay. Okay, that's interesting. So let's see how fraudulent lineage is because we just talked about the fact that in the blood one more time in the blood we're talking about this role becomes clear to us when we study two phenomena this 
ancestry, the relation between conscious beings and experience in the world of eternal or external, excuse me, events. Ancestry or descent places us where we stand in accordance with the law of blood relation. So I'm going to prove my, by the law of blood relations. A person is born of a connection. So whenever you see this individual, someone refers to this individual, this guy named Red Eagle Kufu L, or his nation Nama, N-A-M-A, -A, Nama, a uh, nation or whatever it is, please give out the correct information. And so I'm going to I'm going to present the correct information. That way it can be utilized. So here we have Ferdinand, the first Holy Roman Emperor of the Habsburgs, King of Bohemia. Remember, they was all black. And this is true, because here they are. This is an actual coin that was coined during that time period, all right, of the Holy Roman Emperor. Yeah, look at the hair and, and the nose. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And this is his son. And they are my six great-grandfathers of paternal grandfathers of wife of the third Great grand uncle. Go back to the birth of Freddie Nan and his son Maximilian the second. This is or was their palace. Anyone who has studied the mud flood? All right knows that the Moors, who was known as the Tartarians, actually, if you replace the T's, they become what is called the Barbarians. The Barbarians become the word, what? Barbers. Right, the Barbarians. Right, the Berbers, which is the proper term, the Berbers were Kushites. And they called us Barbarians and made it a negative concentration. But they hid the history of the Babars or Berbers. And I'm going to reveal to you because this is their ancestry. Charles V. the Holy Roman Emperor of the Habsburgs. He was the Holy Roman Emperor, the Archduke of Austria, the King of Spain, the Lord of the Netherlands, the Duke of Burgundy, and he was the heir to and then head of the rising House of Habsburg. Mm. And he was the sixth Great grandfather of the paternal grandfather, a wife of the third and great grand uncle. This is his actual picture here. To the left. To the left, to the left. They called him Carlos Quinto. But this is Charles the V. Yeah. This is Charles the V. Spanish Carlos Quinto was the Holy Roman, the Holy Roman Emperor and Archduke of Austria from fifteen nineteen to fifteen fifty six. King of Spain, that is Castile and Hold on, remember Aragon? Aragon was the dragon in Aragon? It was a movie, but they didn't have you in there, not as the king of Spain <laughs> or the Holy Roman Emperor. Mm. 
Mm. Amazing, isn't it? But here, this is a panel from the painting in Loco Museum in Lima, Peru, depicting the Inca emperors. This panel shows, so he was also the king or the emperor of the Inca Empire. Whoa, hey, wait, 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 wait. Did y'all hear what I just said? Mm. This panel shows the last seven Inca emperors and the consequence first European emperor of the Incas, the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, Carlos Quintos, Quintos means five, Quint, uno, dos, de, cuatro, cinco, right? Quintos, whatever, something like that, as the 15th Inca emperor. This painting can be dated back to the 1800s because the two last entries are Carlos Tercero, Charles III, and the 24th emperor, Europe, um, Inca emperor, and his son, Charles Quinta, Charles IV, House of what? Bourbon. House of what? Bourbon. As the 25th Inca emperor, Charles IV reigned as king of Spain from December the 14th, 1788 to March 19th, 1808. Hmm. Then we have her Royal Highness, Lady Princess, Margaret of Quintos, von Hasberg de Palma, who was my fourth great-grand-aunt of wife of great-grandfather of wife of third great-grand-uncle. This is also the ancestral seat of the House of Burma Palma. As you see, that's it here at the bottom. All right, this is Maximal or Maximilian, the second king of Bohemia, Hungary, Croatia, um, uh, how do you, how you pronounce that? Croatia. Yes, Croatia, that's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of the Romans, Holy Roman Emperor. So this is... Maximilian II, as we showed you early on the coin with his father, Fernandez, or Ferdinand I. And Ferdinand, all right, the first, having to be the nephew of Archduchess Margaret of Austria, who is her here to the right. Her and Maximilian the second are brothers and sisters. And so their father is Maximilian the first, the Holy Roman Emperor. And as you see here, the fifth great grandfather of paternal great grand um paternal great grandfather of wife of third great grand uncle. Now, also part of that family, same family line, we have Alessandro the Moor, Duke of Florence, of Medici. Have you ever heard of him? No. He ruled... Yeah. He essentially ruled Italy. 
husband of the fourth great grand aunt of wife of great grandfather of wife of third great grand uncle. All right, he was married to Margaret of Palm, governor, a governess of Austria, and Duchess of Florence. Connected to the Empress of the Holy Roman Empire, Maria Antoinette Quinto von Hasburg. All right, the ruler of Spain. The fifth great grandmother of paternal grandfather of wife of third great grand uncle. And it says the Holy Roman Empire, Marie of Austria, 1528-1603, daughter of Charles V. She was the daughter of Charles V, who we just showed you. And wife since 1548 of Emperor Maximal, or Maximilian II. So you see her facial features, and you see his facial features. This was a melanated bloodline. Europeans loved throwing themselves in the mix by white, whitening the pictures. Decoloring the pictures. But this is Philip II of the House of Habsburg. All right, he was the king of Portugal. He was the king of England. All right, king of Spain and the king of Nipolo Silica or Cilicia. All right, as you see him here, you see his melanated features here. Remember, these are swarthy, swarthy. This is Lady Joanna Hasburg, Archduchess of Austria, Grand Duchess of Tuscany, which is Italy. This is a picture of her here. Joan, Archduchess of Austria. She's the second daughter of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Served as the Regent of Spain for her brother, King Philip II of Spain, upon his marriage to Queen Mary I of England. Queen Mary I of England. Mm. Their joint title was Philip and Mary. By the grace of God, King and Queen of England, Spain, France, Jerusalem. Both the Cilicia, or Cilicia and Ireland, defenders of faith, Archdukes of Austria, Duke of Burgundy, Milan and Barabin, Counts of Hasper, Flander, and Tyrol. This is Harriet Mary or Maria de Bourbon. Right, she was the Princess of France, and she was the consort. All right, she was the Queen Consort of England. Scotland and Ireland as the wife of King Charles I. She was mother of his two immediate successors, Charles II and James II. So who is she? She's the mother-in-law of the third and great-grandfather, wife of the third and great-granduncle. Then we have Elizabeth Charlotte, Princess of the Palatine. All right. 
as you know, who is also descended from this same lineage is Sophia Charlotte, known as Queen Charlotte or Queen Sophia, in which that Charlotte, North Carolina is named after, which I didn't get into that. But paternal grandmother of the wife of the great grandfather of the wife of third great grand uncle. So we spoke of earlier how 40,000 years speaks of the Cheddar Man, discovered first, moderate Brits had dark skin, is reminded that we are all from Africa, experts say. This is what they say. So then we find out also that the daughter of Akhenaten, uh, Akhenaten the Egyptian princess became Queen Scota, the ancestors of the Scots. They have found skeletal remains of a boy, and the facial or features of the skeletal remains shows that it was from around the same time as Queen Scotia. Scotia. They also found a necklace along with it and resembled the structure and design of the necklace used by Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamen. All right, a tut unk amun, who the historians believe was a relative to Princess Scotia. Yeah, that was her brother. And after his murder, she left Egypt. Kemet, Tamer, Tamere, or Tamere. Do Irish mythology and Scottish mythology, Queen Scotia established Scotland and later Ireland and establish her kingdom along with her husband, Gaetalos. Thus Scotland got her name got her name after Queen Scota and Gaelis from Gaetalos. So this shows that there was a trend of migration from out of ancient Kemet to Western Europe. King James the first, King James the the six, it says here in the book, right? Well, before I go, it says King James was the king of Great Britain, France, and Ireland. He was a black man, and the King James Bible is named after him. King James approved 54 scholars to work on the translation. 47 worked in six groups at three locations for seven years, comparing previous English translations. Geneva Bible, and the text of the original language, Hebrew and Greek. The King James translation has a significant influence on the English language and was widely accepted as the standard of English Bible. Because of this project being overseen by King James and the care and, pre and precise attention to details during his seven years translation, that was from 1602. Four to 1611. Those are the seven years. The King James Bible was considered one of the most accurate translations in existence. Consider it. So here he says, know that this image of a black King James can be a little confusing because of your Western education, but this is the truth, and this is known by the rich and elites in the world. There was the reason, that was the reason I... Parried all, paraded all of the English historians and professors before you, before I got into the bowels of this book. I had to get my mind ready to receive the truth. King James came from a long line of black Scottish Stuart kings. Stuart. Those who have the last name Stuart, whether it's with a D or T, or either spelled S T A U R T. You are a steward, and you are related to King James and his 343 year of rulership in Scotland. The Stuarts not only ruled in Scotland, they ruled France, Spain, Ireland, England, Britain, Wales. King James was able to rule all of these lands because of all these people were of Iberian black descent. 
Are y'all learning something today? Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. All right. So here, yeah, King James Stuart I of England and Ireland, six of Scotland. Well, it says four here, but it's actually supposed to be six. So here it says paternal grandfather of wife of third grand great grandfather of wife of third great grand uncle. Now of course you can look at what all of that means. But anyway, I have the list. King James Stuart the first of England, Ireland and Scotland. It says paternal great grandfather, wife of third, great grandfather, wife of third great grand uncle. We have Charles the first of England, son of King James Stuart the first or England in Ireland. Scotland. Then we have every, um, Henrietta Anne Stuart, Stuart Princess of England, Duchess of Orleans, daughter of Charles I of England. Then we have Philippe or Philip I, Duke of, of Orleans, Bourbon, Orleans, as in Bourbon Street in New Orleans, the new rendition of it, as they say. Husband of Henrietta Ann Stewart. And then we have Philippe II, Orleans, who was the son of um, Philip I, Duke of Orleans, Bourbon, Duke of Angel. Then we have Louise, Diane of Orleans, Mademoiselle, all right, and it says daughter of Philippe the second, the um, of Orleans. Then we have Louis Francos the second, Joseph de Bourbon, the Prince of Conti, the second, Royal Regent, Marquis de Maison Rouge. Then we have Henry Joseph Turner, the third Marquis of Mason Rouge. Then we have Elizabeth Turner, who happens to be the mother of Prophet Noble Dr. Ali. Make him the fifth of Mason Rouge. And she's the daughter of Henry Joseph Turner, the landmark case of the heirs of Henry Turner versus the United States. Then we have John Keats Drew, who happened to be the husband of Eliza Turner or Elizabeth Turner, and the brother to John Drew is my third great grandfather is Frederick D. Drew. His daughter is Sarah Trent Drew Hobson. Emily Morland Trent, Eleanor Elizabeth Morland Butler, and then Ronald J. Butler, my father, thus making me in the line of the kings and queens of Europe as well as here in the Americas of the Omex. Crown Prince, the eighth Royal Regent Marquis de Maison Rouge estate. So, when we get to this individual who's saying that there's a coup d'etat or de facto and fraudulent prince, he's going to have to prove this because I can prove that I am. But can he prove that I'm not? DNA doesn't lie. And I'm not the one who did the DNA testing as far as this information is concerned. I simply align my information with the information 
on Ancestry.com. So the son of King James is Charles I Stuart, King of England, Scotland, and Ireland, Duke of York, Duke of Cornwall, Duke of Rothesay, um, Duke of Albany, the first of Great Britain. Okay. Then you have Charles II, King of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Now, If you follow in my cursor, Charles II was known as the little black boy. Don't believe me? Go to here, Royal House of Judah dot weebly dot com, right slash Royal dash House dash of dash Stewart dot HTML. Y'all have to do your DNA test for you can go back and find out who you are. What make you up? Why you do the things you do? There's nothing been more pleasing in life. All right? Outside of probably a sexual experience, having a child getting married, then finding out who you are in life. Because when the ancient Egyptian says, know thyself, this is the only way that you can really know thyself, truthfully. And we always talk about the ancestors this, the ancestors that, but don't know a damn ancestor. There's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with that. That's true, brother. Yep. We always okay. hear the ancestors. Are you really talking about the ancestors? Or are you talking about some thought form that niggas made up thousands of thousands of years ago? I don't think you're talking about real ancestry. They ain't talking about the ancestors. But this is ancestors information, ancestral information. Y'all niggas talking about some spooky thought form shit that niggas made up thousands of years ago. A spiritual golem that you can feed in order to get your, your, your damn rocks off so you can make it go do what you need for it to do for you. That's what, you're, that's what most niggas are worshiping. But they ain't talking about the real ancestors that makes them up, because if they did, then they would take a DNA test, but they can damn be able to tell other people who makes them up. Anyway, King Charles the Stuart II, it was called the Black King of England. You see that? To go to, it says, matter of fact, the word swart or steward, steward or swart comes from the old Nordish root swart or swart, which means black. Steward is the same word as swarthy. Steward, swarthy, which means black in old English. There was once a Stuart line of kings in England. Yeah, there was once. But they now reside here in America. All of the Stuarts need to stand up. You're my cousins. The name of the founding ancestor was Stuart, which means black man. In this point, we featured the original paintings of one of the Stuart kings of England, Scotland, King Charles II, as lovely known 
lovely known as the black boy of England by his subjects. He is commemorated in the celebrated name of the Black Boy Inn, found all over the British Isles. King Charles II was a black man. Many of the surviving paintings falsely depict him as a so-called white man in clear contradiction to the famous depiction of the Jolly King. Come down. King Charles Stuart II. The eldest surviving son of King Charles I and um, Henrietta Marie of, Sp of France, daughter of Henry IV of France, the future King Charles II, or the future Charles II was born on May 29, 1630, at St. James Place, London. The second child of the marriage, he placed, replaced an elder brother, Charles James, who had died earlier after, early after birth. It is said that when Charles was born in 1630, that he was nicknamed the black boy by his mother, Queen Henrietta Maria, because of his dark and swarthy appearance. Did y'all hear that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Dr. Ali. But, yeah. The, the, tell me something, though. Uh, the, the majority of the, of the uh, Europeans at last name Stewart, do they know that means Swati? No, they don't. Dr. Ali. Yes. My dad just passed. He's 95. He was 95. He was born in 1933. His nickname was Stuart. Okay. When he was coming up, that's what they called him. I didn't know mm -hmm. that's what it meant until just now. Mm-hmm. Somebody knew. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rise in power. Lay us alone. Yeah, brother. Peace be upon him, brother. So now we have Henrietta Anne Stewart, Princess of England, Duchess of Orleans, and Philippe, or Philip I, Duke of Orleans, Bourbon, Orleans, Duke of Anjou. And it says, wife of third great-grandfather of wife of third great-granduncle. Philippe I, or Philip I, third great-grandfather of wife of third great-granduncle. Then we have Louis Philippe, the first of the Bourbon. All right. He was the King of France. Paternal grandfather of the wife of great grandfather of wife of third great grand uncle. Now, understanding that all of this is talking about correlations, but it doesn't make it my personal correlation. Um, by um, ancestry. All right, that's why I show you the actual correlation cause paternal grandfather, or wife of great grandfather, or wife of all of that is confusing. It's real simple. This is me here to the right. We go up through the line Ronald Butler, my father, Eleanor Elizabeth Moreland. My grandmother, Emily Morhan, Trent, my great grandmother, um, Sarah Trent Drew, my great great grandmother, and Frederick D. Drew, my great 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 grandfather. Okay? And then my great 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 grand uncle, John Drew, who married Eliza Turner, Elizabeth Turner who was the daughter of Henry J. or Joseph Turner, who was the son of Louis Franco II, Joseph of Bourbon, who was the son of Louis Franco Xavier, the last Prince of Conti, the first royal regent, Marquise de Maison Rouge, House of Bourbon, son of Louis 
Diane D. Bourbon, Orleans. Daughter of Philip II, Duke of Orleans. And then we have Louis Philip D. Bourbon, or uh, what is called Philip Bourbon, the Duke of Orleans. All right. So we're talking about bloodline. Can he prove bloodline ties? Can this Red Eagle Khufu L prove bloodline ties? You see, I can directly go through bloodline. If he can't show you this information, then he's fraudulent. <laughs> he's de facto. And he's attempting a coup d'etat. King Louis the Eighth, the Bourbon, Dauphine de France, the first cousin, four times removed, a wife of third great grand uncle. So here you have him, and then he is the father of. You have um, Louis the uh, Ninth of France, who is the father of King Louis the Eighth. No, excuse me, the Eighth is up to Ninth, as we see there. Um, then we have Philip Duke, who is the brother of Louis. And then we have Philip Hay, who is the son of Philip Hay I. Then we have Diane, Louise Diane of Orleans, Mademoiselle. We have the daughter of Philip, of Philip Hay, the second of Orleans. Then Louis Franco, the Joseph of Bourbon, Henry Joseph Turner. And once again, who is this? This is the second royal region, the Marquis de Maison Rouge, Louis Franco II. And then we have Henry Turner, Turnica, the third royal region, Marquis de Maison Rouge. His mother, who was Eliza Turner of the Washita, who actually was the empress of the Empire Washita. who was the daughter of Henry Joseph, her husband, the emperor, was John Drew, making Frederick Drew a prince, Sarah Trent Drew, princess, Emily Lee Morhan, princess, Eleanor Elizabeth, princess, Ronald J. Butler, my father, Prince, and myself. Now Crown Prince in the 8th Royal Regent Marquis de Maison Rouge Estate. Now, once again, he got to be able to prove this information. Philippe II, Duke of Orleans, His Highness, the Royal Highness, Louis Philippe, Albert of Orleans. All right. Father in law of the great grandfather of the wife of the third great grand uncle. And as we see here, Louis de Bourbon. The Deuce, Louis, I believe that is the ninth. No, excuse me, I'm tripping. My glasses here. Um, um, that sixteenth, and King Louis the Bourbon here.
the brother is Leopold the First, Joseph Charles, Dominique. He's the Holy Roman Emperor, Archduke of Austria, Grand Duke of Tuscany, all right, of Lorraine. All right, and these are, this is actually a coinage of him, as you see here. And this is, once again, direct lineage from Leopold Joseph Charles and down to me. So that means that a portion of my ancestry comes direct from the Holy Roman Empire, the Habsburgs, down through what we now call Orleans, Bourbon Orleans, or Bourbon Palmer. You have Elizabeth Charlotte. Princess of Commercy Orleans. Then we have Queen of France, Marie Antoinette. I'm sure you all heard of Marie Antoinette, but you didn't know that Marie Antoinette looked like this here to the right. She was melanated. So related to the kings and queens of France, related to the kings and queens of Spain, related to the kings and queens of England, related to the kings and queens of Austria, related to the kings and queens of Norway. It goes on and on and on. You have to understand is that they married empires. They married each other to form the empires. Have you ever seen the head of Marie Antoinette? She got beheaded. This is how she looked. She's supposed to be pale skinned, Arlene. <laughs> not from this no, bus. Not from this painting and not from this bus. Say it again, Chief Joe. So was King Louise. He had, that's oh, why he had to flee from France. Oh, yeah. But Dr. Liam is crazy because, you know, on the Olympics that just went by, they had ho uh, headless horsemen and headless people all over the opening ceremony. And I was like, mm -hmm. is this like, are they depicting, you know, what they did back when they changed everything? Maybe. That was crazy. Sound about right. Sound about right because we know that they came into the bloodline and took over. They stole our bloodline. This is why I'm able to prove through the DNA that this is our bloodline. And I'm pretty sure everyone has these connections because y'all are interested in this information. There's no way possible for you to be interested in this information and not have these connections, I promise, because we just finished reading about how the ancestors are in the blood. And I'm not saying that you can't use thought forms, but realize that these are thought forms that are based on your seven chakra system. 
So when we talk about issue a leg bar, when we talking about batala, or do mare, when we talking about um imiya and oya and oshun and ogun, these are names for your seven chakra system, from your pineal gland to your genitals. But because we create things external because we need the left hemisphere of the brain, we externalize these entities, which was once internal entities. Now we have externalized these entities and created thought forms to do our bidding. And there's nothing wrong with that, but realize that's not your ancestor. That's a thought form in which that was generated by the ancestors. To carry on the purpose and the powers of the ancestors. But if you want to get to the root of the ancestors, then you have to go within. You have to go inside of the blood. And this is what you will find. Your ancestral connections, which brings more to light of who you are than anything else in this world. Now you have something to pass down to your children, a real lineage. You think that they would act crazy if they knew that they came actually from kings and queens? You had you hear Negroes always saying, "Oh, we come from kings and queens." Prove it. Well, uh, well that was just in Africa. Hold up, nigga. No, we ruled Europe, we ruled Africa, and we ruled the Americas. Prove it on all ends. This is just the European side. The Moors ruled Europe for 800 years. These are the descendants of the Moors. Fact, fact, fact. Everyone always talking about the descendants of the Moors. The Moors this was here. They ruled Europe. They did it. Prove it. I can show you. I've shown you for the last hour the real truth. And not just historical, but genetic. Not just through lineage, but definitely genetic. That heritage. This is how you know thyself. So you want to know the sources of it says right here, Marie Antoinette was the great granddaughter of Leopold I, who was the Holy Roman Emperor. This is Leopold I here, the Holy Roman Emperor. And she's the great granddaughter. It says the man, Leopold I, who bore this heavy weight of geological responsibility, was swarthy, a middle in height, with the projecting lower jaw, and protruding lower lip were traditionally marked, if not disfigured, the hashburn. See, this is the lower lip that they're talking about. You see, her lower lip is larger than her upper lip, and then her chin sticks out. But you can't do nothing with this curly hair right here. That, 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 is, that is the detail. Look at the nose. So these were the Moors of Europe who ruled Europe after 1492. That made you think that, well, they got rid of all the Moors in Spain and Portugal. Hmm, that's interesting. 
No offense to wrestling. Did they really? No, really, if they say that all of America is swarthy. <laughs> exactly. Hold on. This is 1527. This is Philip II of the Hashburg. As you can see, he's clearly a Negro. And he states right here that he was the king of Portugal and the king of Spain. And this was 1527 when he was born to 1598. Hmm. That sounds like almost 100 years after the Moors supposedly had left Spain and Portugal. This nigga was still rolling. Wow. So is that true? Hmm, here it is. The Empress of the Holy Roman Empire, Maria Antoinette. And as you see, the word Spain. What was this? Oh, 1528 through 1603. Hmm. Wow. Look, look like we shooting holes in that assumption that we've been told. Can we believe the European or any so-called historian who tells us these things when we got proof, we got the dates, we got the person's name, we got the rulership, we know who it is? Can we really believe what they're telling us? Hmm. Okay. I believe not. Uh oh. King of France. Louis the sixteenth of Bourbon. They go that lip again, that larger lip. Uh oh. He's the princess Isabella of Palmer, of the house of Bourbon Palmer, who was the daughter of Philip, Duke of Palmer, and Louise Elizabeth of France. She was the granddaughter of Louis the Fifteenth, King of France. Her father arranged for her to marry Joseph of Austria the heir of the Habsburg monarchy. Elizabeth was married by proxy and prom at the age of 18 and left for Austria on October the 6th, 1760. But you can see from the side view that she looked like him. But they are relatives or her. Look at that bottom lip again. That was a trait. Then we have Louis Joseph Xavier Francos of the Bourbon of France, the Delphine, the France of France. Then we have Louis Francos, his son Xavier Gauthier, the last Prince of Conti, the first royal region of the Marquis de Mason Rouge House of Bourbon. And as you see here, once again, my ancestry links directly to it. Once again, this Negro named Red Eagle, Khufu L, 
will have to prove his lineage because I can prove mine. Louis Franco's the second, Joseph de Bourbon, the Prince of Conti, the second royal regent, Marquis de Maison Rouge. Once again, my relationship. Now, to verify this information, let's go to the Imperial Empire of Washington de Dec de Mania. This is written by Ravana Bay, who was the educational, the Minister of Education for the Empire of Washington. Says the Washington Nation of Moors, or an indigenous people of North America, Washita, otherwise known as the Omex, have been originally associated with the Washita. Accordingly, the Washita has been the primary group of more general population and indigenous people identified in history as the Amoro, or the Moors. Known in the Spanish and French, the Washita has come to be, um, to be known to the English as the Adina Hawellian people identified the Punic Iberian affinity, maintaining an evolution, Carthaginian heritage. As such, the Watchtower has been associated with the um, Eastern Algonquin Native American, having acquired an ancient Egyptian as well as a Punic script of vocabulary, as they have appeared in the epic graphic records of North America. The Imperial House of the Bourbon. Who did we just finish talking about? Since the treaties of Utrecht has recognized the United Washita, or better yet, the Washita Nation of Moors as masters of the whole of North America, the Spanish and the French de Bourbons became the um, protectorates of the Washita west of the Imperial Demarcation Line. The end of the French and Indian Wars against the British has marked the point where the Imperial Empress of the Washita has been recognized as the sovereign of all North America by the de Bourbon, French, and Spanish Imperial Houses. Annie Maria was to become the heir of the throne and Empress of the Empire Washita de Dectamania. She would be the eldest daughter of the reigning Empress. Moreover, the eldest son of Luis, all right, this is 16th, became 16th. Here he is. Did y'all get that? Yes, I did. Meanwhile, the eldest son of the 16th became heir to the French crown and later Louis, Louisiana Delphi. The young heir to the French throne, Louis the 17th, would become wed to the young heiress of the Washita Turnica throne, Annie Maria. The imperial marriage would become officiated official in 1795, pursuant to the conveyance of the Spanish land grants bestowed upon the young heir, Louis the 17th, and his young wife and heiress, Annie Maria. These two would also receive the Imperial Spanish Land Grant of 1763. So here we have Henry Joseph Turner, Turnica, the third royal regent, Marquis de Maison Rouge, of the estate, and as you see, direct lineage from him. Then we have Joseph Joe Henry Turner, the fourth royal regent, Marquis de Mason Rouge. All right. And you see direct lineage from him. Then we have Thomas, Miss Norma Timothy Drew. And anyone who's still calling him Timothy after these years of the information being put out that his name is not Timothy, but his name is Thomas Drew, or lying, and shouldn't even be um, spoken um, to until they make that correction. 
This is Prophet Noble Drali, who was the fifth royal regent of Marquis de Maison Rouge. Right? And of course, he's my first cousin four times removed. So see, you have to find somebody who's closest. First cousin four times removed, the only thing that could be closer is a brother or a sister. Since Prophet Nobodrelli did not have any children, allegedly, we find out that Johnny Lewis Gaston Jr., who was the sixth royal regent of um of the Mason, uh, of the Marquis of Mason Rouge, the estate. And as you see here, he was the fifth, and Corella Turner Drew, who was the sister to Prophet Nobodrelli, married Johnny. Gaston Sr., who produced Johnny Gaston Jr., who happened to be the sixth royal regent, Marquis of Mason Rouge. Why? Because Prophet Nobodrelli did not have any children. So it went to his sister, Drew, to the son. And guess what? The Empress married Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. Okay. You know, I might be too young for that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the Empress married Johnny Jr., who was the sixth royal regent marquis of Mason Rouge. And here you have the Empress, Vidyasi Tierra, Trinica, Washington, Gaston, El Bay. And they say a picture, say a thousand words. America, who's at the helm, is one of the oldest empresses who was melanated then. And our last former Late Empress Bertia C. Tierra Washington Tunica Guest on El Bay is melanated just recently. So, we speak about Annie Maria, and she would be, um, in moderate day, she would be the first Empress of the Washington de Direct Demonia. Then you have Louis Franco, Xavier the last Prince of Conti, the first royal regent, Marquis de Maison Rouge, the House of Bourbon. These two married. To produce Louis Franco II, Joseph de Bourbon, the Prince of Conti, the second royal regent of, Mace, of Marquis de Maison Rouge, All right, then we also have who married the second empress of the Empire Washita, who would be Marie or Marianne or what is called Annie Maria. And they produced Henry Joseph Turner, the third royal region of Mar Marquise de Maison Rouge. And he marries Sarah. Turnica, who was the empress of the Empire Washita. So symbolically, she would be the third. This is just talking about in modern days. There was thousands and thousands of empresses prior to. I just showed you, this is just one of them here to the left of that ruled America. And then Henry Joseph Turner and Sarah Turner produced the child Eliza Turner. And Eliza Turner and Joseph H. Turner was brother and sister. 
and part of the landmark case, the heirs of Henry Turner versus the United States, which we won. And Eliza Turner married John A. Drew, who was the brother to Frederick D. Drew. And they produced the son, Prophet Noble Drali, who was the fifth royal regent of Marquis de Mason Rouge and the spiritual leader and founder of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science and the Science Moorish Science Temple of America. And Prophet Noble Drali and Corella Turner were brothers and sisters. And their first cousin is Annie. Uh, Frankie um, Turner Washator, who happens to be the mother of Verdiasi. Right? So Thomas and Corolla Drew, first cousin Annie Turner, was the mother of Empress Verdiasi Tierra Washator. El Bay. Her father was Frederick H. Washington. That's the Empress. Her husband, as we just went over, was Johnny Lewis Gaston Jr., as we see here, and he was the sixth royal regent Marquis of the Maison Rouge after Prophet Nobudrali. Now, this is that side of the family. Now I go to the side of the family where an individual by the name of Dr. Malachi of York comes into the family. He says he comes into the family through Annie Maria, which is the same place in which that we had it from Annie Maria de Maison, uh, what is called Annie Maria de Washington, the first empress of the Washington, the Dr. Money in moderate day, moderate time. All right. And she, um, her half brother was Old York, who was called um, Ben York or Ben Ali. Um, and he had a child because they was half brother and sister, and he had a child named Ben York. All right. And Ben York um, had a child, Leela Miller, and she married Bobby Williams. And they had a child, which is Mary C. Williams. Mary C. Williams happened to have been the mother of Dr. Malachi York. Right, so come to find out that if this is true, then Dr. York is my second cousin one time removed. My first cousin is Prophet Nobud Ali, four times removed. The Empress is my second cousin, three times removed. King Joe is my first cousin, two times removed. The Empress Wendy who is the present empress of the Empire of Washington, is my first cousin, one time removed. Now, you see a picture of Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is here. And when we go, if I went further into the royal matches, I would go into the house of De La Poole. De La Poole is where Prophet uh, excuse me, not prophet, but honorable apostle Elijah Muhammad, who is known as Robert Poole, um, derives his ancestry from. we happens to be the same ancestry in which that is listed through the ancestries in which that I spoke of earlier, which is called the House of De La Poole. All right? So therefore, he's in the family as well. So these are some, we went through some fantastic families, individuals in the families 
in which that wow it makes my head swim every time I think about it how all this information connects that's amazing though So this verifies things, God. Yeah, it is amazing for real. So here, King Frederick Joe Joseph Washington Washington. He's the seventh royal regent, Marquis of Maison Rouge, Prince Bay. Even though he was the crown prince and was born into the family, adopted into the family of the Washington by way of the empress who gave him that title, June seventh, nineteen ninety nine. He always referred to Joe as the royal regent. So Joe is the royal regent, not Prince Bay. But Prince Bay was the crown prince. That was the title that the empress gave him. Okay. And as you can see here, that is the picture of me there at the bottom circled and I'm going through my cousin phases here, like John Gaston Jr., who married the Empress, was my first cousin, three times removed. The Empress is my second cousin, three times removed. So I doubled into the family on that particular list who happened to be the child of Corella, who's the sist- who was the sister to Prophet Noble Jurali. And remember, Corella and Prophet Noble Jurali, both are the children of Eliza Turner and John A. Drew. Therefore, can he really be the crown prince or any royalty if he can't prove it? Can he really be the eighth royal regent, Marquis de Maison Rouge, of the estate? And understand that when Prophet Noble Drali went to Savannah, Havana, Cuba in 1928, he received a mandate of the vast estate. That's when he realized who he was, essentially. And he also spoke about the fact that he was five times stronger than he was before. That was making mention of the fact that he was the fifth royal regent. And see, this is something in which that the temple can't explain. And this is the problem with the teachings in the temple. They're not trying to connect the pieces. They're not trying to connect the dot. I am. I'm trying to find out who's who on planet Earth. Where do I fit in? And as well as also, you should be trying to find out where you fit in on planet Earth. You'll never find that out in the more science temples. No, you won't. But you'll find out a good song, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell him, tell him, tell him what you used to do up in there, brother Al. Oh, brother, brother, they don't teach you nothing. What's my mm. concern? Do a lot mm-hmm. of singing, and you think you think you're in a church. Mm. Really, you would, brother. But a lot of them, a lot of them. Oh man, them temples been. Oh man, but has been has been uh you know uh, infiltrated. You say, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, infiltrated. Yeah. Compromise, so, you know, right? Compromise, infiltrated, and no different than, and no different than than the church, just like you said, right? Yeah, because they have five hundred one c threes. You know, they are five hundred one c threes. Okay, okay. Mm. <laughs> I'm not even going to go on that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Boy. brother. Mm. Yeah, All right, so Louisiana Tech, right? I know, I know. 
So Louisiana Territory, more than 1 million square miles of land area was never sold to the United States. And that's just talking about within the United States. We ain't talking about almost the whole of Canada, which actually we're talking about almost 30 million acres. After more than 30 years of professional legal research in 1922, the emperors revealed the truth about the purported Louisiana purchase to the government and citizens of the United States. The Ouachita, the rightful owners of more than 1 million square miles of land extending from the Appalachian to the Rocky Mountains and from Canada to the borders of Mexico. While they near nearly 200 years, the, Washington, the United States of America has alleged they acquired our land in the Louisiana Purchase, 1803. In case number 191, United States Supreme Court, United States versus the heirs of Henry Turner, which we just showed you and spoke about, which you have to be part of that landmark case, which I'm pretty sure Khufu L is not. Red Eagle is not. And if he is, please prove it and show it. Demonstrate to the public who you say you are. If you cannot do so, then I recommend that you stop lying to the people. The United States Supreme Court confirmed the decision of the lower United States District Court for the District of Louisiana in favor of the Turner heirs, case number 32, June 19, 8, uh, June 19, 1848, Henry, the heirs of Henry Turner versus the United States, finding land once under Spanish French land grant to Joseph D. Mason Rouge. Hold up, Joseph D. Mason, who, who is Joseph D. Mason Rouge? Joseph. We well, yeah, had Joseph. Hmm. That was Joseph right here. Louis Louis Franco's the second Joseph of Bourbon. Of D. Mason Rouge. Just as him here. Okay. So just want to make sure that y'all know who we're talking about here. Joseph D. Mason Rouge to be the rightful property of the heir Turner's lawful heirs, of Henry Turner's lawful heirs, which I am one. So therefore, how can Red Eagle Khufu L come and say that I'm not when DNA proves the ancestral lineage, the blood tie? And this makes sense on the reason why I've been gung-ho for 25 years trying to get this information out. Makes all the sense in the world now. And then 10 years before that, teaching metaphysics, history, esoteric information. Louisiana Purchase, the United States of America purchased merely the streets of New Orleans. The streets of New Orleans, that's it, which is called Bourbon Street, where they have the Mati Gras every, um, annually in the time of February, every year, right? In the military bracket or barracks, as they were sold, as they were in 1803, in the military barracks. So that's all about so. so that's, the whole, why uh, really, so that's why they really celebrate. I was ready, ready uh have that right. Mm-hmm. right. And and we don't even know it and we be participating in it and shit. Hey Willie. This United States decision concerned one of the several grant engineered by the King of France and the King of Spain for their mutual blood relation. The Delphi of France son of the de jure, and I just showed you that I'm linked to the de jure king of France, Louis the Sixteenth. Oh, just in case if you didn't, remember. Here he is. This is him. My relatives.
the Delphi of France, who's the son of the de jure, king of France, Louis the sixteenth, and nephew of the then current king of France, Louis the seventeenth, and nephew of the king of Spain, Charles the fourth by royal bloodline. Okay, we're talking about royal bloodline now. Remember, we went back to the science of blood. This is why I was able to get this information and find this information, tying it back, was because this is in the blood, right here. The road became clear to us when we studied two phenomena. First is the ancestry, the relationship between conscious beings and experience in the world of eternal, uh, external, excuse me, events. Ancestry or descent places us where we stand in accordance with the law of blood relation. So the blood of the ancestors led me into this loop, back to where they needed for me to be. Here I was back in the 90s, back in the mid-90s, 1995, 1996, getting the information from Prince Bay concerning the Washita and him getting trying to get me to go down to the Empress, to meet the Empress. I didn't meet her until 2003 or 2004, excuse me. That's when I met her. Then not realize she was my first cousin, three times removed by marriage. My second cousin, three times removed. Only the ancestors. A person is born of a connection. See, that's the connection. The ancestors did that. He raised a tribe, a line of ancestors. And what these ancestors had bequeathed to him is in his blood. See? So when they talk about the blood of Jesus, it's always... What was the song in the name of, in the blood of Jesus? Come on, what, everybody remember that song? We used to sing in church. It was nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, wasn't it? You remember that? Nothing but the blood of Jesus? I, I don't think I remember that one. <laughs> nothing but the blood of Jesus? Uh, the blood of Christ or some. No, no, no. It was nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, okay. I, I can't remember. Nobody remember the, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, see, y'all must have had to be down here in the South, guy. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. It's I remember. Nothing, it was nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, in this case, it was nothing but the blood of the ancestors. That royal bloodline. This grant alone conveys to the Delphi of France a total of thirty leagues of land in the Louisiana Territory of France, June 20th, 1787. This is before the Constitution. And any grant, remember, Supreme Law of the Land? King Louis the Twelfth, a.k.a. the Marquis Joseph de Maison Rouge and the French Delphi marry who? Empress Annie Maria of the Washita, and their son was Henry Joseph Turner. So the wife of Louis Francos the second Joseph de Bourbon was who? Who was the wife? Any Maria, who produced Henry Joseph Turner, who became the third royal regent Marquis de Maison Rouge. And as you see here, a clear line of descent. It is nothing but the blood of the ancestors.
Get the book, We Are the Washer Tour, by Dr. R.A. Umar Shabazz Bay. We've had disagreements, but it doesn't matter because um, even he can't um, bypass my lineage. Here's an article, The Empress. They wrote on The Empress, and she spoke about the fact of the Louisiana land never being purchased. Continued her quest to bring truth to light. Empress Vidyasi Tierra once tour Twitter guest on El Bay. Recalls 40 years of work, including research as an activist or an carvist. Okay, or car, or car, or, or, cave, or carvist. All right, she's an archive, archivist, however you want to pronounce that, in order to locate documents and treaties concerning land known as the Louisiana Purchase, in which her people are identified as the ancient ones, the Omex. And the Empress say their land was never included in any land deal. That is, was not part of the Louisiana Purchase, which was sold to Spain, to France, nor was it bought in 1803 when France rolled it over to the United States of America. She writes, President Thomas Jefferson was well aware of the fraudulent land deal. So see if there's anything in which that is fraudulent, it was the land deal. But it's not my ancestry. It's not me. It's him. Red Eagle, Khufu L. He's fraudulent. And okay, how many proclamations that you write it doesn't make a difference if you can't prove land ties, if you can't prove royal DNA. I can. There's a difference. There's a difference. And anyone following him, you just got to That makes a lot of sense. I don't care what kind of proclamations you have, uh, right. documents. Uh, uh, if you don't have land ties, don't mean a hill of beans. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't tie you back to the land. It doesn't identify you as part of the royal bloodline to the land. And then your documents are null and void. I'm going to say that again. Your proclamations, declarations are null and void, Red Eagle, Khufu L. They are null and void. You can't prove it. They can't do it. <laughs> right here, she writes, President Thomas Jefferson was well aware of the fraudulent land deal and stated his sentiments at the time. In truth, the land spoken of has never been part of the United States of America. It was always belonged to the ancient ones, and this is the land in which that um, the God, um, Chief Jock, was reading to you all about, about them talking about go west, young man. That was to take the land. This sounds like the same land President Abraham Lincoln was going to return to the Moors after slavery. He called it the Egypt of the West and the Central America, the land between the Rocky and Allegheny Mountains from the Gulf of Mexico up into Canada. And on both sides of Mississippi in 1848, the Washita, also Washita or Ternaka, um nations turned their land case before with took their land case before the United States Supreme Court and won their case under Judge Taney, the same judge who in 1856 gave his opinion, which was not a legal decision in the tragedy Dress Scott case, which basically states there is nothing a black man has that a white man is bound to respect. The results of this opinion meant further slavery and death of the Washington Turnica and other nations. It was, they was murdered and by the tens of thousands enslaved or ran off their land, the names were changed to hide the truth of their history. The Washington became Washington and the Turnica became Turner. All right, this is the Empire Washington D. Duck Demonia, governs over 30 million acres of land. This is just North America alone, which happened to be the Washington proper, as it is called, Washington um, Terra. Consists of which lands? Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Minnesota, Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, um, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Alabama, Utah, parts of Texas, and New Mexico. 
Florida and the portions of the even so-called 13 colonies and the original 13 states on up into Canada. All right. <clears throat> this is the actual land grant for which that verifies the decision or better yet, the renderings of the Spanish and French land grant of the Washington proper. This is the United States versus the Turner heirs, the case. That was one. And as you see here down at the third paragraph, well, yeah, third paragraph, it says, uh, now this court acting under and by virtue of the act of con uh, Congress of the 26th May, 1824, entitled an act enabling the claimants to land with the um, limits of the state of Missouri and the territory of Arkansas, um, institutes proceedings to try the v validity of their claim and also an act passed on the 17th date of June 1844 entitled an act to provide for the adjustment of the land claim um, with, within the state of Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Now, to remember, that was just part of the states that we talked about. And in those parts of the states of Mississippi, and Alabama, south of the 31 degrees of north latitude and between Mississippi and the Perdido, um, Perdido River. And do order and adjourn a uh, judge and decree, and it is hereby ordered a judge and decree that this petitioners, Sarah Turner, Eliza Turner, Henry Turner and George W. Turner are the true and lawful owners of and have good title against the United States, the defendants in in all the lands and hereditaments claimed by them in their raid petition, which lands are described as the follows on the map of survey executed on the 27th March 1820. So that proves it right there. Sarah Turner, Eliza Turner, Henry Turner, and George W. Turner. This is the portion on which has been verified by the state of Louisiana, which is the middle portion on up into the upper portion of Louisiana. They do not own that. And it's been verified by the state of Louisiana, Division of Administration, State Land Office, January the 8th, 1992. Radiasi. Gaston, Empress of the Washita. Eliza Quitman is Eliza Turner, who is Prophet Nobujali's mother. So his vast estate came to 1,036 acres, Mason Rouge Grant. All of it together by the family of Turners and Harris. Harrison, Taylor, and Cox came to a total of 68,883 acres of land, which happened just to be this portion that you see here to the left. So let's look at the 13 colonies now. Get the sixth book, The Negro Question. Part six, Chief Joff was reading the Negro question, part seven to you. 
This is part six, and this is the 13 Black Colonies by Lee Cummings. And he tells you in the book that the five black founding fathers of the 13 colonies, King James Stewart, which we already proved we related to, King, James, King Charles I Stewart, which we proved that we related to, King Charles II Stewart, we showed that we are related to, all right? So at least three out of the five so far, I've done enough research to verify that we are related. And this would probably mean that, of course, the others, because they married into each other. So here, 1607, Virginia founded by Black Scott King James I. 1620, Ma Maine, Massachusetts, Maine, founded by King James I. 1620, New England founded by King James I. 1632, Maryland founded by King Charles I. 1629, New Hampshire founded by King Charles I. 1636, Rhode Island founded by King Charles II. 1638, Delaware was founded by King Charles II, which actually happened to be the first state. All right. 1636, um, um, no, 1663, North Carolina founded by King Charles II. 1636, Connecticut founded by King Charles II. 1681, Pennsylvania founded by King Charles II. And it was named after William Penn, who had a treaty with the Lenape, who happened to be the northern branch of the Washita and Olmec descendants. 1663, South Carolina was founded by King Charles II. 1664, King Charles, excuse me, King James II, Duke of York, founded New Jersey. 1732, Georgia founded by Black German King um, George II. All right. This is also what is called the claim of the Marquis de Maison Rouge on the Washington. All right. This correlates to the grant. All right. This correlates to the grant. So as you see here, Joseph de Cruz, the Mason de Rouge, um, um, the Marquise de Mason Rouge. It is right over to the right after the second paragraph. It is in the book of We Are the Washington. It is also in Let's Set the Record Straight, read by Dr. Malachi Z. York. Now, Dr. York mentions John Hansen. Well, John Hansen, the first United States president under the Articles of Confederation, happens to be part of the same family. In fact, he's in my family line. So the man on the left on the $2 bill is John Hansen. The man on the right is Ben Bay, Emmanuel Muali, known as Benjamin Banneker. The first president of the United States of America under the Articles of Confederation was John Hansen, allegedly a Blackamoor, a Maryland, Shuni, Native American patriot who fought in the American Revolution. Okay. Now, Ben Bay Emmanuel Moali, known as AKA Benjamin Banneker, was a Moorish Mason and who was the architect who designed the streets of Washington, D.C. with Masonic codes and archaeological glyphs, as well as also the city of brotherly love called Philadelphia. Here is John Hansen, the first president um, under the First Continental Congress. As you see here, a Sir Arlene New Tupac L. Bay family tree, and here he is. Of course, the original um, in the book, let's set the record straight by Dr. Malachi of York, he says that 
John Hanson's, this is the real picture of John Hanson, which is here at the bottom, dark skin, and that the one to the left is the Europeanized picture or version of John Hanson, which of course that is a Europeanized picture or version of John Hanson. It does not um, indicate the real John Hanson. However, this picture has been said to be the Liberian president. And if you get the book, The More Dirty Little Secrets by Dr. Claude Anderson, he has the exact same picture in the in his book of John Hanson, a real picture, which is the picture of John Hanson being melanated. All right, so it says, so Ben York was born in Virginia before the whole America formed a union, while America was, as a whole, was called Virginia. During this time, John Hanson, a blackamoor, was the first president of the union. That is to say, before George Washington, that was, um, there was a black president. Ben York was not lawfully a slave, according to um, the Act of 1682 and later the Ordinance of 1784, known as Fundamental Conditions. He therefore was entitled to the same amount of land as the other persons involved in the so-called um, purchase of Louisiana, which was none. <clears throat> So here, the Washington and Turnica family carries the imperial bloodline. After the United States came to our land, their names was altered to Washington and Turner. They also changed the spelling of Washington to Ushita, a European misnomer that retains the pronunciation of the original name, Washington. Several de um, deviations of the name appeared as Waxichichin, um, Wichita, um, Utah, Etowah, Etc. The term Washita colloquially has come to mean ancient ones or the black ones. All right. In the Egyptian Kemetic Hieroglyphic Dictionary, Washita appears as Washet or Washita. All right. That's where the origin of the name comes from. Washita. Washita is Washet. All right. Where we get the name Shebas or Shebat. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to end class here. Are there any questions concerning anything that we're going over? Not at this time, God. All right. And the questions up and amazing information. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did, uh, I did the, the two I did my heritage and ancestry dot com so far. I think, Good. I, I think I told you, I think I found out, I think I related to you as cousin. Yeah, yeah. Start start putting the um start putting your um your family tree together, guy. Yeah, for real. Cause that's the only reason. That's the only. That's the only way I was able to get this information was when I start putting the family tree together. I used the Empress family tree. I used Doctor York's um, family tree, and I was like, "Hold up! When I put these trees together, shit, I'm right there." So, you sometimes you have to use, um information in which that comes because they're going they're going to give you hints they'll give you a hint about a certain individual in your family tree um go over that hint um make sure you you know find out if that's the best hint or best possibility and who that really fits and um normally i mean i would say nine times out of ten is a good hit hint so um do that in your um putting together of your um tree of life or what is called your family tree. Evil, evil. All right. Yeah, I can't wait to do mine, uh, because my name like Gaston, my surname is B O N D O N and we say Bondon, but I think it's Bondon because it's French. Right. It had an I on the end, uh I found some like overseas like in France. Italy, they had an eye on the end of there. Right. All 
All right, I'm going to say I uh, table watch to each day you want. Each day you want. Hey, how I tell you watch to each day you want. I say watch to each. I say watch to each.